Okay, all right. So today, okay, so again, sorry, good morning, everyone. So uh, as per what I've explained before, today we will have um, a guest lecturer from UTM, Dr. Fadina. Hi, Dr. Fadina. Hi, hi, Madam Farhana. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Everyone is better after PKP3. Lebih sihat. Okay, so Dr. Falina, um, is, you was right. She was um one of the, apa eh, timbalan tu, timbalan dekat kalam, flat, what is that? Uh, post call? Oh, Deputy Director of uh, the Center for Urban Environment in the Malay World. Uh, so it's Kalam in Bahasa Melayu, Kaja Alam Bina Melayu uh, at University Technology Malaysia. So today, Dr. Falina will share with us on the introduction, a little bit of introduction on how to do measure, basically on data collection and a little bit on um, report writing. Okay, so we actually also have, the, uh, Dr. Fadina, we have our coordinator here, uh, architect Zalina, she will join a little bit late, I think, and another lecturer, architect Muhammad. Yeah, so a little, bit, a little bit on the students, they are in third year, first semester, um, they've been learning via online for almost two years, and most of them already did. They already went to uh, practical training last semester. Same like us. Uh, we same, are still same. running the online studio until now. Ah, luckily this time they are joining as face to face studio. But before this three semester online. Okay. Okay, so I think we can start now. So I would like to invite Dr. Falina to give her input on the topic. Okay, uh, okay. thank you very much, uh, Madam Farhana. So I'll share my screen first, yeah? All right. How do I share the screen? Um, do you have any video when you want to share? Um, I think one of the video will be... I have put it in my presentation. Okay, because if you want to share video, you have to click... Um, be, when you click share, there's like one box over there to share computer sound. So you can click that uh, one also. So I'll stop sharing first, is it? Uh -huh. Stop share first. Stop share. Okay. And then click share again. Uh, and optimize uh, for video click. All right, all right. Okay. Okay, can you see my uh, slideshow? My presentation? Yes, we can see your screen now. All right. So, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning, students. Um, I hope everyone is uh, have in a good condition today. All right. So, today is uh, only a general overview. I am going to share my experience as one of the supervisor for magic drawings in UTM. Okay, perhaps we can share some of the knowledge together. I want to learn from USM too and I'll share my experience as a supervisor for UTM. Okay, so my presentation for today is data gathering and report writing for magic drawing. As uh, mentioned by uh, Dr. Uh, Maida Farhana before this, I am Dr. Fadlina. You can call me Dr. Fad. I am uh, graduated from UTM and PhD, my PhD also from UTM. And my niche area is more on the vernacular architecture, heritage and conservation. And some of my, uh, some of my experience before this, I was the contract lecturer in UITM Sri Skandar Perak. And then I joined UTM on 2017 until now. And I was the deputy director of Pusat Kajian Alam Bina Dunia Melayu. We have the center for the study of world environment in the Malay world in, in UTM, which we call as uh, Kalam. All right. And I am now the program coordinator for Bachelor of Science in Architecture with Honours. And I have been supervising uh, major drawing in UTM since 2000. 17 until now but unfortunately um, for this two years time we cannot get uh, cannot get the permission to go to the site so we change the measure drawing into the monograph publication instead of going to site so what i'm going to share here is uh, more on the how to do the data, data gathering on site and how to do the report writing but it will be some uh, it will be only a brief and general overview only right okay so first thing first, I think you are going to, to do your major drawing this, this semester, right? Or I think this week, is it? Is it, Madam Parana? 
the students are going to the site. Yeah, but actually one of the group already is, is at site today. They're, they're not joining the thought, they will watch the YouTube later. All right, okay. So it okay. depends on the group. Mm -hmm. All right, so basically this one is uh, more on the, on the things that you are going to do on your site later, right? Okay, I'll start with this one. Keep calm and love history. So this one is perhaps our main intention before we go into the deeper understanding of the magic drawing itself. We need to set up the intention. Uh, we want to know, to learn about the history. This one is another image showing my students are in, uh, were enjoying them, themselves in, um, next to the magic, their magic drawing buildings. I think this one, uh, they have taken these images during the independent day. Uh, last two years, okay. Okay, why do we need to learn about the history? Uh, I'll start with the introduction first. To understand at the present and anticipate the future, one must know enough of the past, enough to have a sense of history of people. And also another quote by Robert Penn Warren, history cannot give us program for the future, but it can give a fuller understanding of ourselves and our common humanity so that we can better face the future means that why do we want to learn about major drawing? Okay, why do we need to learn about the history? Because we want to know who are the previous, uh, who we, we want to know about us, okay? Who are the past, the history that we have gone through, the strength that we need to, to uh, focus more on and the weaknesses or the things that we have been mistaken before this, we try to avoid that thing. So that's why we need to learn about the history. Okay, what is heritage? Can somebody tell me what is heritage? Can I ask the students? Yes, you can pick their names. Uh, I'm not really. Uh, maybe I, we can ask. Uh, Jing Wen. I just want to know whether you know. Uh, before you go to your magic drawing, if there are any. Anything that you have read uh, that comes into your mind before you start this thing. Hello, is Jiwon there? It's me. Oh, I'll ask. Hi, Magan. Yes, yes. Any thoughts? Hello, madam. Okay, so what is heritage? Uh, heritage, I think heritage is something that something that built uh, in the past and we we preserve it uh, now and for the future, something that we think valuable. Okay, yeah. uh, I, who is that? Margaret. Uh, okay, okay, okay Margaret, good try. I think yeah, uh, it is almost there, right? It is a continuity of cultural memory, which refers to activities that have been practiced by the early people in relation to their daily lifestyle. Okay, as a history, tradition, and qualities that a country or society has had for many years, and it is also considered a special sense of belonging or particular person of community derived from inheritance and the power of continuity from one generation to the next generation. Okay, so it means that something which is uh, traditionally has been uh, passed over and over by some generation to the uh, a younger generation okay and then uh, that is the thing that we need to remain if not they are going to vanish it somewhere right okay this one is also some of the general knowledge about the heritage it can be divided into two categories which is the tangible and intangible heritage okay if you can see from here tangible heritage is something that we can see we can touch and so on right for instance this one is a uh, it can be found on the historic quarter, including old building, archaeological site, and also cultural landscape, right? So most of these uh, kind of uh, building, physical uh, building, physical things that we can see and we can touch it, it can be called as tangible and intangible heritage, something that we preserve from the tradition, right? And then another one, it is called as intangible heritage. You cannot count it, okay? Uh, this one is example of uh, uh, other traditional culture, language, folklore, uh, custom, ritual, and religious belief that were practiced and performed by the local community of the place. You can see from the example that I have given here. This one is a traditional performance. 
and then this one we have this traditional cuisine okay and also we have this traditional performance of a uh, wayang kulit so this one is uh, all is called as intangible heritage okay all right so we we move to our topic uh, on the data gathering all right so this is the content of the presentation for today uh, we'll start with the introduction first and then the second one is the process of uh, getting the data for your measured drawing and also the product okay um, mind you that this one is basically based on my own experience as uh, in UTM okay uh, perhaps your your lecturers, uh, Miss Farhana or Azarina or El Muhammad, uh, you have your own uh, format for USM, right? So, so I am only sharing my my our experience from UTM. Okay. What is measure drawing? This one is another and another question for the students. Can I pick names? Okay. So next is Rafika. Rafika. Okay, what do you know about the magic drawing? You are going to do the magic drawing this week, right? So perhaps until today you are you are already familiar with this term. Africa, you there? I should take students' attendance now. Hi, Africa. Hello, madam. Ah, yes, what is magic drawing? Discussion. Are you talking to us? Yeah. Uh, to Fadlina. Yes, yes. Uh, siapa uh, okay, oh, Muhammad. Yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you nice for joining you. us. Thank you for joining us today. I'm not feeling thank well. That's why I'm not chasing all my uh, work. It's okay, my, my pleasure. To share the experience thank, with you guys. Uh, so I, I'm, I will be joining you today. Just uh, mm -hmm. keep me up. I just listen to what you say. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Air Muhammad. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay. So, Rafika, are you there? <laughs> right, okay. Yes, yes. Are you talking? Yes, can you hear me? Can you? Uh, can. Tak dengar lah, Rafika. Cuma cakap tak, mic you tak bergerak pun tu. Apalah, I think that probably look good. Okay, um, apa tu? Okay, Zainab. Hey, Zainab. Hello, madam. Hi, so what is measured drawing? Um, measured Have drawing you? is... Um, uh, it's like um, how we know the existing building, more detail and based on the accurate Site and the object, the detail of the building. Okay, I think it's almost there. All right, definition of measure drawing uh, architectural scale drawing of an existing structure means that the structure is already there, and then you go there and then you measure it and you put into your documentation. And it can be a plan or drawing constructed to accurate measurement of the things represented, uh, like you said, all right. It is a traditional way in which architect learn through close observation and recording of architectural form, proportion, materials, and detail. So those are the things that you need to know about your measured drawings building after this. You need to record all these uh, findings in terms of the architectural form, proportion, materials, and details, and so on. Uh, and then it is beyond this, not only this one. Okay, these are the traditional, I think this one is uh, quite... Uh, uh, traditional uh, equipment used for measure drawing nowadays okay because nowadays we also have this technology something like GIS and so on but this one we usually use uh, for the students to learn more uh, in detail and in uh, more uh, easiest way okay why do we need to, to do architectural historic preservation Okay, the first one uh, for the education purposes, it, it is uh, for the 3D learning experience. Okay, for instance, you have this kind of uh, historical building, nobody has documented it before, and then you go there and yet, and then you do all this uh, kind of uh, uh, measurement, something like this one. They are trying to wrap 
this uh, pattern so that they can document this pattern into 3D model. Okay. And then, and, uh, and then uh, this one is also same like your studio uh, project. But your studio project, you are going to design your own building and then you do the 3D model. But this one it is basically based on whatever that has been existing. Uh, existing now okay and then for the recreational purpose it is more on the heritage appreciation like i said before why do we need to learn about the heritage and the traditional uh, things for, so that we can appreciate more on that one okay and then on the inspiration in terms of patriotism sense of belonging and strengthen the identity of people and nation for instance okay not only from Malaysia i think some of you are coming from different countries right so you also have your own identity and your own um, based on your own origin. So you need to know what are the identity of your particular uh, space and your particular nation, right? Uh, measured drawing, uh, okay, it's always related to the values, including there are several values included in measured drawing. For instance, we have these architectural values that we want to infill in your in you guys students okay architecture values heritage values you need to know about the cultural values social values aesthetic values historical values and the values of sense as place okay so we are not only focusing on the architectural values only but you need to know all of these things uh, in general all right okay Issues that are commonly faced by historical building. So that's why we need to do all this measure drawing and so on. Okay. Uh, for instance, uh, this building, it is a rumah traditional Malacca, Malacca traditional house, which is located in uh, Kamp uh, Kampung Rim, Malacca, Jasin. I have visited the, this building on 2013. If you can see from this, uh, this building, you can see the, uh, the 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 color of this uh, window is still intact. It is in uh, although it is also already abandoned, abandoned uh, during this two thousand and thirteen. But it is still intact. Okay, but um, but uh, due to the physical damage due to, due to the climatic and environmental effect like weather, earthquake, of movement, or rainy very rainy season and so on. Uh, man-made damages like war, vandalism, traffic, vibration, fire, etc. So this one is, uh, I just want to show the comparison between my visit on 2012 and another visit on 2017. Okay, if you can see the this one, the color is not there anymore. And then uh, surprisingly, the wall is not there anymore. Okay, so I don't know what happened now because uh, after the MCO for two years, uh, what what already happened to this uh, uh, abandoned traditional houses? So I think I will have a visit later on to know what is the current condition of this house. So it is a, a very unfortunate event uh, because uh, it is a very I think this one is a very nice building, but we cannot afford to manage it. Okay. Um. Right. Okay, and then another one, uh, it is due to why do we need to do the preservation or measure drawing first, because it is uh, some of the building is in poor maintenance, all right? For instance, this one is um, our measure drawing during 2018 in Madrasa Al Latifiyah Kampung Gajah Perak. Okay, this one, uh, it is a madrasa. They use it for, for, uh, for madrasa and also as a learning center to recite a Quran and then they they, uh, they usually they also ask uh, the really religious preachers to come here and then they stay up here to so that the villagers can come and learn about uh, uh, Islam religion and so on all right but this one is the condition during 2018 this one is a uh, condition uh, condition during on uh, on the upper part of this this one but until now, they are still using this uh, lower part as the kindergarten, right? But I just want to show how 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 the things will uh, 
ruin everything if uh, there are poor maintenance because of this uh, conflict in terms of the financial constraints and so on. Okay. All right. And then some of the buildings, it has been neglected. For instance, uh, this one. Okay. This one is uh, another example of how the building, if they uh, neglected the building, this uh, example is taken from uh, Malacca traditional house in Kampung Tanjung Rimau. This one is also done during my field study on 2013. Okay, so the houses is surrounded by all these uh, bushes and from far, we cannot uh, really appreciate the, the small, small details of the house, which is very unfortunate. Okay. Um, if you are studying more about the Melaka traditional houses, they, it is the only state in Malaysia that have this kind of uh, concrete, this concrete uh, staircase. And it has a lot of influence from all over the world. For instance, for this uh, kind of uh, roof, they have this uh, motif of fish over there. And then uh, at the middle of this uh, roof ridge, they have this kind of uh, crown motif, okay? And then if you can see from here, this one is uh, another another prominent uh, prominent features in Melaka traditional houses. They have this concrete, the colorful, colorful concrete tiles on their concrete staircase. Okay. And this one usually they imported it from uh, during my study, I found out it is imported from the Belgium, Japan, and so on. Okay, so Malacca has a very rich influence from all over the world as it, it, it is a it is a, it has the business of trading before this right and then uh, this one right. okay this one is another reason why we need to do measure drawing because some of the traditional house has been demolished and replaced okay this one is uh, one of another example of what we do for for our major drawing on 2018, we have the Rumah Haji, Rumah Batu Haji Wahid Ruas, Perak. Okay, and also it is owned by a businessman who, who did the business of a tin mining. Okay, they have this factory of a tin mining beside this uh, house. Okay, but uh, you see how this is the condition during the major drawing that we did. Okay. Uh, because of uh, the poor maintenance and uh, there are nobody to take care of this house so there are a lot of bats over here and then uh, but uh, Alhamdulillah we managed to do the measured drawing okay but during 2019 I think uh, this house has been moved to Pulau Pinang I'm not sure whether it has been uh, because it has been disassembled in Beruas, I'm not sure whether it has been assembled in Pulau Pinang, but they said that uh, it has been bought by somebody to be built in uh, Pulau Pinang. Okay, and then you need to know that that is the uh, the specialties of Malay traditional house because it didn't use any nails and it can be disassembled and assembled back, right? And some of the building they are uh, have been demolished and uh, because they want to do for instance sorry can you hear the sound
Okay, this is example of a surau at Pangkalan Cepu Airport. I think Madam Farhana knows about this building because it has been used for years. But uh, in 2020, I think several months ago, it has been demolished because they want to, to make uh, the, the bigger land of uh, Pangkalan Cepu Airport. Okay, so some of the nearby residents, they did not disagree. They do not agree about this, uh, this action of demolish these things because it has been one of their, their memories, their childhood memories when they uh, uh, use their, this, this row for, for daily pages and so on. Okay, so that's how uh, things become uh, very unfortunate. We cannot save uh, the heritage building and so on. But this one is, uh, it, it has something like uh, contradicting uh, in terms of the way they all about it for instance uh, half of the timber has been dis disassembled and the one that they use the tractor to demolish it it, it is only a concrete part of this uh, surau okay all right so that one is only why uh, the introduction actually okay why do we need to do the magic away and so on before they be, before all the heritage building traditional building, building will be vanished so we need to do the documentation all right okay uh, this one is uh, more on the process uh, as i said i will only share about my experience in utm okay because i have been involved in uh, utm magic room since 2017 so these are the things that we did for instance we have more than uh, currently we have more than 600 building documented documented and we save it in uh, kalam like I said before, Pusat Kajian Alam Bina Dunia Melayu, Melayu Kalam. So all the documents and compilation of the Magic Rowing is safe over there. And it is comprises of mosques, shop houses, temples, church, school, government quarters, administration offices, palaces, and so on. Okay. And we also have done the Magic Rowing throughout Malaysia. And we managed to do it in South Thailand. North Sulawesi, South Sulawesi, and Cambodia. We did in, all right, but, and, and another thing uh, I just want to share for measured drawing in UTM, we have two separate subjects, which is the measured drawing, the poster, the drawings, and so on. And then we have another subject, which is called as heritage studies, comprises of two credits, which uh, this one is uh, involved with the report writing and so on. And we taught the subject during short semester. So the students do not have any other subject except for this major drawing and heritage studies only. So they can focus more on this major drawings. And you can see the list of major drawings until 2018 uh, from this column website. I think uh, after this, you can go through this uh, website, to know what are the, the buildings that they, we have measured, okay? So the images is showing uh, the measure drawing that we did in Madrasah Kamaliyah and Masjid Tanlipang Lima Kinta Ipoh Perak in 2018 before the pandemic. Okay. And then um, the one is introduction. So we go to the fieldwork and data collection. So uh, this one is only example on uh, the houses that we have chosen as our measure drawing. This one is Villa Street View Johor Bahru. In 2019, okay, we have this kind of house which is uh, owned by the royalty of Johor. So, if you are doing your major drawing after this, you will need to know who are the owners of the house, even the original owners of the house, and then it is inheritance to whom, and so on. Because for this one, uh, we also have some difficulties in terms of getting the data because it is uh, owned by the the member of Ro uh, Johor Royal. Okay, so some of the information, they it is very private and confidential and they cannot share it to us. So some of our students are, uh, were struggling, but, uh, but Alhamdulillah, we managed to do it uh, on time and uh, we, we seek help from, from several people to get, the, to get this uh, information, right? Right. So this one is more on the, the field work. What do you need before you go to the field work? You need your computer, your printer, your extension wire, your stationaries, kettle, rice cooker, sleeping bag, pillow, proper attire, and so on. Okay, this one because uh, we usually will ask the students to 
to stay at the particular particular uh, major drawing building. For instance, we are doing it on, we are traveling from Johor to Perak. Okay, so we use the embassy and the students need to uh, equip themselves with uh, their belongings for two weeks. Okay, usually we will go to site for two weeks and then we will have two, two visit by the lecturers. Mind you, when you are going to your site later, you are your university ambassadors. For instance, you are the ambassadors of USM, University Science Malaysia, right? So you need to behave, behave well, dress appropriately, respect the villages or nearby communities, ask permission if you want to know about uh, information and so on, and don't stay up late. Usually, uh, because, uh, but it depends on uh, the magic drawing building that you have chosen. For instance, you are doing it on the urban area, for instance, so you don't have to get to, to, to meet all the villages and so on. Okay. Fieldwork, this one is on the fieldwork. Okay. Uh, this is uh, the explanation of the fieldwork. It compasses any activities which collects data about a site. And the objective of fieldwork is accurate gathering of significant dimensional and representative data. It includes shooting field photographs and checking various records against the site and often armed with nothing more than pencil, papers, cameras, and measuring tools. Okay, so that's why we need to have this kind of field work. Instead of only doing this virtual work, we cannot do, get the exact uh, accurate measurement of this particular building. And also if we do it from online, from virtual uh, test research only, we cannot get, really get the first-hand experience from the nearby communities, for instance. Okay. On safety measure, it is always your responsibility to look around, think ahead and use common sense because you are doing it in somebody else's properties. A few reminders as listed below. Work clothes such as jeans and shoes and hard hats, if any. Okay, because this one is to avoid any, any incidents. All right. And if you are doing it in deteriorated structures, don't go out into structures that are obviously deteriorated and unsound. Never enter dilapidated buildings alone and always use light in darkness area. Don't assume all wiring is dead. Okay, so you need to be very be careful, especially when you are dealing with this kind of uh, buildings. And do not walk or work alone, especially for the girls. All right, so you need to take care of each other because you are, you are doing it in group work, right? Uh, for instance, uh, like this one, uh, like I said before, if this building is uh, very old and it is an abandoned building, and you need to do the measuring of this particular building, so please be, please uh, take care of yourself, right? Please work in groups and so on. And if you are trying to step on this kind of uh, area, for instance, this exposed area or this kind of exposed area, please be careful, right? So, or, or what you can do is you can use this digital uh, measuring, measuring equipment from your phone to get the exact uh, measurement of this part, for instance. So you don't have to step on this particular space, which is very dangerous, okay? So you need to make sure of uh, this thing, the safety measure, all right? And on site, okay, this, uh, this is the thing, okay, the steps that you need to, that perhaps you can use th these tips and trick uh, in doing your measure drawing later, right? For instance, uh, you will have your first-hand experience, get to know your building first before start measuring, you need to know the location, surrounding contacts, current condition, and etc. For instance, uh, where is the location of that particular building? For instance, for the first one, it is a Kelantan traditional uh, Chinese house, and it is located near the beach. And what are the things that they, they do in their design strategies in order for them to, to make sure that it is suitable uh, to be in next to the beach, and so on, right? So this one, uh, before you go to the site, you can also uh, try to find it online, right? Okay, and then you need to know and understand changes to your building first before start measuring. For instance, there are development of the building. For instance, it was built in uh, 1870 and then it has undergone the first renovation in uh, 90. 
and then your second renovation is uh, done in 1910 and the third renovation is 19 uh, in 1990 so you will need to have this kind of chronological or you need to provide this timeline for instance okay on the 1996 here is the plan of the house for instance and then uh, on the 1736 they have uh, already uh, extends the Serambi area for instance because of uh, and and you need to know why they they need to do the renovation perhaps they want to fulfill the requirement of uh, the extra family members somebody is married in their families and then they have the children like they have babies and so on and then they need to to extend their yeah, plan for instance and then let's say uh, on 20 2018 they have already added some uh, concrete uh, column and also concrete wall underneath the house okay so you need to know uh, what are the renovation and where 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 is the effective spaces and also when is it okay and then okay this one is uh, get to know your site first like i said before perhaps before you go to the site you can do the site overview perhaps you could use your google satellite Google Street View, physical maps, and so on before going to the site. Okay. And then you also need to know about the history of the site, walk around the site, and so on, right? The history of the site you also can get from online sources because usually uh, the major drawing buildings that we have chosen, usually it is more on the uh, very historical building and it is uh, uh, perhaps the place is very well known of its historical. Uh, evidence and so on so somebody must put already put some of the resources on the online internet okay so go through the the history of the site from the online first before you go to the site and then to know the boundary of the site get a copy of uh, grand tanah or land title from owner of the house or you can get it from the land office pejabat tanah daerah okay just to know where is the exact location of that particular house so that you can create this kind of uh, uh, site plan. Okay, the first one is this. This one is a uh, location plan. So the house is located in Jalan Langgar. Okay, Alusta. And then this one is the site plan. So you know uh, the exact, you need to know the exact boundary of this particular uh, house. Okay, to check the boundary, look for boundary marker, boundary stone, and etc. For instance, this one is the plan Tapak Madrasah Tuk Janggut which was built in 1920 pekan langga alusta kedah okay so uh, all right another thing uh, when we choose our major we usually we have to make sure that uh, the the building that we have chosen is really perhaps really special in terms of the architecture of the house for instance or it has a very significant historical value okay not only aesthetic value for instance this one uh, we have chosen this one uh, because of the uniqueness of uh, this particular house is because the madrasa and the house is combined together. Okay, because uh, the owner of the house is the one of the religious preachers who has taught uh, uh, the villages on religious religious uh, teachings and so on. So uh, the so he combined his house with this madrasa. So we can see the function of this house. Uh, uh, it is very special because it has it has directly related to Islamic teachings and so on. Okay, All right. All right. So these are the usually we require you to know uh, the history of the site, the geography of the site. Geography means that uh, perhaps you need to know what is the type uh, topography of particular site. For instance, is it located on a on a hill? Or is it located next to the river? Or is it located next to the beach? Okay. And then the social economy, what do they live? Uh, they do in their daily life. What are the main resources for them? Are they fishing? Are they doing the rice cultivation and so on? Okay. Are they uh, rubber tappers? Right. So you need to know what is the, the common trait of uh, all these uh, people who are living nearby. Okay, and then you need to know also the show, show culture of uh, particular uh, communities and also their settlement. Okay. And um, for the major drawing, you are 
very depending on the dependent on this one, the primary and secondary sources. For primary sources, you get it from the field uh, studies based on the interview with the house owners, neighbors, relative, paid man, historian, craftsman, carpenters who covers the Kong, local authority, and so on. All right. So make sure when you do your major role later, you are going to interview all these uh, related people to know more about your building. Okay. If not, you are lack of data if you, you don't do this interview session. All right. And then you have your secondary sources. You will do this literature review from books, newspaper cutting, document letters, archival materials, and you need to do uh, a visit to Pajabat Tanah and the authority buildings and so on. These are the examples that uh, we did in our measured drawing, the, how we interview the house owners. Okay, We have the interview with uh, these uh, local people, the residents, the nearby residents and so on, okay, to get to know better about our house, right? And we also can get uh, some of the information from the historical activists, because uh, for the historian, they know better about the history of particular state, uh, site and so on, okay? All right, so on your report writing, um, this is um, our expectation on our report writings. Building typology based on original function. For instance, if we are, we are choosing the measured drawing uh, building later, we need to know what is the base, uh, what is the original function of that particular building. For instance, it was once used as madrasa, but now it has been used as uh, a kindergarten, for instance. But we will do the measured drawing based on its original function, which is the madrasa. Okay, and uh, our building name will be based on the main owner or original of owner of the building. Usually, for instance, that's why if you see our major drawing, we also uh, name the building such as Roma Hajah Salima, for instance, because Hajah Salima is the main owner of the house. Okay, we do not take the current owner of the house because it is inheritance from the uh, older generation, and the year of building being constructed. Okay, so we need to know what is the origin and the year of uh, being constructed and also the year of building in its glorious era. Okay, glorious era means that uh, the building has become very well known at particular uh, at particular year, for instance. For instance, uh, for madrasa, uh, there is one particular year that it becomes very well known to the villagers. So uh, sometimes we document the building based on that because it has been covered and people already know about the history of the particular uh, madrasa, for instance. So our magic drawing will be based on this glorious era. And we need to know the original condition before any renovation and also building ownership inheritance. For instance, uh, we usually will uh, do the family tree of that particular owners. For instance, for instance, who is the grandfather and then who is the great-great-grandfather, perhaps we can get it from uh, the, the, the newer generation of this uh, house, okay? And it is uh, need to be on this actual fact, okay? And there will be some challenges for abandoned building. I'm not sure whether you are going to do some abandoned building or you are going to do a... a, a quite a new building okay but uh, for us uh, before this because we also do do some of this uh, abandoned building some of the building it, it has change of name change of function like i said before and some of the buildings are in dreadful condition it is very bad condition uh, sometimes we cannot step into the building building and then it need to find relative for information so this one is quite hard because uh, usually the relative has already migrated to the urban area and so on so that's why some of the information we cannot get directly from the surrounding and there is also conflict of facts for instance uh, somebody is somebody is telling you that the house was constructed in 1918 sorry 1920 
but somebody else is talking about uh, the house is, is built on 1930. So it has conflict of facts. But uh, in this case, your, your responsibility is only reporting. So you need to put uh, like uh, in your report writing, you need to, uh, to tell that, okay, uh, this the headman of the village stated that the house was constructed in 1920. However, the relatives say that it was built in 1930, right? So you need to report both. Uh, you can assume you cannot assume that one is right, okay? But you need to report both, and then you need to mention who said that, okay? And then for the uh, data gathering, uh, you need to know the typology, form, spatial arrangement of the building. Ornamentation, any decoration, material, construction process, space ambience, function for spaces, furnitures, and interior spaces, if you can get there. And based on your observation, you need to know the culture of that particular area or particular site. Okay, and, you, and then you need to know the lifestyle and daily activities or routines of uh, surrounding context and the communities that surround the building and also environment aspect. Okay. And all this uh, data gathering you can get from old photograph, old drawings. Okay, if you go to one particular building to be measured, try to find out this kind of uh, resources. Try to you can ask permission from the house owners to get all the all these uh, old photograph, old drawings, land letter, any will uh, from the great grand great grandfather, for instance. Uh, there there was a will to let go the house to the newer generation, for instance. General writings, diaries, postcard, newspaper articles, brochures, heritage thrills, and so on. So all these things, you need to ask permission from the owner of the building. Okay, uh, if, if it is very good if you can get all these things so that you can, uh, your report writing will be more rich in terms of the information, okay? All right, are you there, students? Are you okay, guys? So will you ask questions? Mm -mm. If you want to ask question, you can just uh, you can just type on the chat box. All right, okay. Common mistake uh, when you do your report writing. Some of the writings uh, that we checked before this, uh, perhaps it is unclear writing because of lack of, uh, I think some of the students, they just do it for the sake of submitting the assignment. So that is very unfortunate because that's why it is become unclear, right? And also, uh, this one is also a common mistake. Emotional writing based on assumption, prejudice, and etc. Like I said before, uh, your responsibility, your role is only on uh, to report. You cannot uh, do the writing based on your own assumption. Okay. The use of inaccurate terminologies. Okay, this one is a very common uh, mistake perhaps, uh, especially when you do the measure drawing in English and you do not know what is terminology in Bahasa Melayu, for instance. Okay, or uh, or there are a lot of terminologies of uh, decoration in, in in different region, for instance. Okay, so perhaps you not you are not really sure about the terminologies, irrelevant and lengthy literature reviews. Okay, there are a lot of literature reviews that you referred to but some of them are irrelevant, but you tend to put everything in your report just to make sure that it will be very thick, for instance, okay? So try to avoid this kind of uh, mistake. Writing without references, this one, this one we, uh, is very obvious, okay? Even the introduction, you need to put your uh, references. For instance, you need to put uh, like this, the citation, Padlina 2000, uh, Padina 2009 is saying, um, so you need to put what are the statement that she said, for instance. Weak in architecture description. Okay, this one, uh, how to overcome this weak in architecture description? You need to read a lot, okay? If you don't, don't read, you do not know, you are lacking of, uh, 
you are lacking of terminologies, you don't know what is the accurate terms of uh, each specific buildings and so on. So try to read a lot and uh, read uh, a lot of academic writings, for instance, basically based on your specific topic. Okay, uh, that one is on the get, uh, data gathering. So when you are on your site, when you reach your site, usually you will start your, your measure drawing with sketching. Okay, usually we will start with the site plans and, when, and then we'll do the elevation plan and also section. And usually we also do the measurement uh, together with the sketches. So for instance, this one is the details of a truss, right? So we also have uh, taken the consideration of the measurement too, right? Uh, this is the first thing when you reach your, uh, your, your site later, you need to sketch. Okay, and then I think this one uh, has been uh, mentioned before this. You need to know your uh, boundaries, topography. What are, is there any trees, shrub, plants? Okay, and also if, if the site is located at historical area, you need to know the development of the building and so, so on. Perhaps you need to know the morphology of the building surrounded this site. Okay. Um, this one is uh, as an example of how to do the floor plan. Okay, we usually we'll start with the outline first, uh, working outside the building. Okay, and then after that we add opening like windows, doors, external, and etc. And then we started to do the inside of the building, begins with room and etc. And you need to show the thickness of the wall because you are doing the magic drawing things. All right, so everything must be measured. We need to know what the accurate measurement or dimension for each space. All right. And this one uh, is the elevation. Principal facade of structures. Sketch the elevation from a distance. Okay. When you reach your measured drawing buildings, uh, you take some distance and then you start to draw the elevation. Okay, uh, the first time to go on paper should be the if lines, which is horizontal. And then you try to do the vertical uh, wall and mark the ground line and add little such as doors, windows, and water pipes, and etc. Okay, this one also you can try to imagine the scale of uh, the, the proportion of each, each element. For instance, how big is the, how big is the two, two leaf door? How big is the one lift door? Okay, it is different from each other, right? So try to, uh, to try to exercise more on this uh, skill and proportion in your sketches. Okay, and then this one is for the section. Uh, you can also try to sketch your section, the height of each story building, relative level, the shape and construction of the roof. Try to draw the staircase, height of windows and window seat, and etc and try to do the roof plan, okay? Um, usually some of the students, they started using this uh, roof plan using uh, using the Google satellite and then they get this roof plan, okay? So perhaps this is one of these uh, advantages of this, this uh, new technology using Google uh, satellite and then they can, uh, or also uh, you can also use drones, right? You can, I think USM has the, this kind of uh, drones to be rented to the students and so on. So you can use drones to, to, to indicate the, the roof plan. Okay, this one is also the on the measurement. Okay, sometimes we also use this kind of uh, help from the bomber to get uh, to, to the bomber give us uh, permission to use the train to get into the top of this uh, building, okay? Okay, on the detailings, uh, it may include significant architectural details such as molding, profile, cornice, columns, doors, windows, covering, and etc. This one is also you need to, to really uh, go into details because this is a small, small detailings that uh, is very beautiful and you need to appreciate it more, okay? For instance, this kind of uh, we have this kind of 
uh, surface modulation or ornaments in, on walls. And also we have this uh, a lot of patterns on the uh, staircase railing, for instance. And we use these traditional techniques of rubbing. Rubbing techniques on butter peppers for motif and patterns. Like this one, we, we try to uh, rub uh, this area and then we got this pattern and then we transfer it in your 3D model. Okay. I know you 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 already know how to do, do this one because uh, usually you use your AutoCAD and Revit for your studio project, right? So it is uh, the same thing. You can just uh, trace back in, uh, in AutoCAD later, right? Okay, this one is example of lectures on site and data validation. Usually we will have a visit to, to the major drawing buildings for two times. Usually we will come at the beginning of the first week and then before they coming back to UTM. Okay, because we have to make sure that everything, uh, every information is there already before they come back to our campus. Okay, for the first one, we have this, uh, this one, uh, this uncle is a historian. Uh, this one is uh, in Beruas. We do the presentation in a mosque. Okay, the second one, we did the presentation in a madrasah. This one is Madrasah Kamalia uh, next to Masjid Panglima Kinta, Ipoh. Okay, so we ask the students to present whatever they have got in their site. And then we, uh, the, the villagers will will validate the data, whether it is true or not, whether it's correct or not, all right? This one is, uh, another one is Madrasah Al-Latifiyah, okay? We also have, uh, uh, we check the drawings before they came back to the end. This one is also, we, we learn from the villagers so they can comment on whatever data that they have got, especially on the reports, okay? Because they, they know better about their area, okay? So, preparing for submission, this one after they came back to UTM, so we started to check back whatever they, uh, they did for their drawings and so on. Okay, this one is basically, uh, like I said before, they do the rubbings and then they turn it into AutoCAD drawings. Alright, and then these are the example of uh, the drawing that they have contributed. And then this one example of a poster that we request them to do. Okay, so... In UTM, we have the several submissions such as poster, they need to do the model, they need to do the report, and also the videos presentation. Okay, so these are the expected, uh, expected summary that uh, from the report that they change into the poster presentation. This one is another example. Uh, this one is uh, we did it in Cambodia. Okay, and then all right, this one is uh, another. This one is an example of model submission. Masjid Khairiyah Lenggeng, Negeri Sembilan, uh, from the actual building. So we did uh, the model. This one is a uh, rumah kedai wakaf tu Puan Saripah. This one, if you can see, it is an abandoned building with this uh, a lot of trees has covered up this area. But because this uh, Kampung Pusai area, it is very historical. And now it is uh, already abandoned because it is situated in uh, in an urban area in Ipoh. Okay, this one is Masjid Panglima Kinta. We did the uh, they did the uh, model using the three D printing and laser cutting. But uh, okay, for this one for this menara, I think because they are using the three D printing, it is quite uh, costly. The menara itself has cost them uh, about 250. Okay, and then a small, small detail, they use the laser cutting and so on. Okay. This one is another example. Uh, the one that we did the discussion with the villages before this, Madrasa Kamalia. Okay. And then this one is uh, Sekolah Melayu Kampung Kuchai, Ipoh, also in 2017. Okay. Uh, I think that's all. Uh, so you will need to know your roles and responsibilities now. It is not just an, a, a simple assignment for you guys. Okay, You will be a major contributor to the documentation of Malaysian architectural heritage. So, so it is a very big role and you need to take the responsibility uh, very eagerly. Right? 
So I think uh, that's all from me. Thank you very much and all the best for your major drawing later. Okay. Thank you so uh, much. Hi. Yes, yes. Uh, how do Thank I you so much, Dr. Fana. It's very, very interesting input. And suddenly you flashback of all the memories at UTM. <laughs> okay, uh, students, do you have any questions to Dr. Fadlina? They haven't started doing their measure yet. <laughs> Once they started, there must be a lot of questions. Uh -uh, it's okay. I think uh, you know what to do now. I think yeah. Uh, try to be familiar. What are the things that you need to fulfill for this uh assignment? Like I said before, don't treat it like just an and a simple assignment. You are the one of the main contributor of the of the heritage preservation in Malaysia. Okay, so your role is very big, actually. Um. Okay, I think uh, there's no question. And never mind. I've recorded this. I hope you can um, don't take it for granted. Okay, you can always watch again the video uh, at me uh, at YouTube. I already share the link at our uh, e-learning. Okay, guys. Uh, I think uh, all the best. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Fadlina. Okay, before that, let's have a. Very fast, uh, nih, group photo. Okay, everyone, please switch on your camera. Hi, do I need to call everyone's name? Please switch on your camera, guys. Guys, Hazik and Yuki, this is on camera. They are very shy today, perhaps. <laughs> They've been having like online classes for for a few semesters. Faster, faster. Time is money. Hey, Laila, you want to see your face? I can only see your tudung, the tip of your tudung. Okay. Hey, RM, Adeka. Maybe she's not feeling well. All right. Okay. So I'll take a picture to come on. All right, smile. Uh, Atira, can we see your photo? It's blurry. Hi, Atira. Okay, morning. Okay, one day we cannot see your face. Okay, smile. Make sure your face, huh? you want, you don't, you don't, we don't want to see just eyes and nose. Okay, one, two, smile. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Farlina. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Farlina. Welcome. All the best. Good luck. Bye. Bye. So, students, don't go yet. RM, are you there? Yeah, I'm not there anymore. Okay, so how many of you already got updates from the building owner or manager? Other than group one. Group two, three, four, five, any updates? Please just switch on your mic, eh? Yeah. 
Hello. Um, hello. Hi, Aminia. Uh, we are from group two, so uh, still waiting for the confirmation. Yeah. Did you did you call to follow up? Uh, yes, yesterday, but uh, they asked us to call by today again. Okay, so yeah. call call just after this, okay? After the class, yes, yes. there is to call them. I think you all of you already went to practical. You know how people work. Okay, there's a lot. Of, you know how how you work. Yes. Well. There's a lot of yeah. things. So I, of course we have to keep on follow up uh, them, follow up with them. Okay. So group two follow up today. So update update on the follow up status at the end of after you call basically after you call just update. Group yeah, three, yeah. sorry, group two, group two what building at how far? Uh, however, uh, uh, agama Islam. Um, uh, yeah. Update by today. Group three. Group three. Uh, madam. Hi. Um, so for our group, uh, the first building uh is a uh, number thirty two mentioned, but then the oh, the owner yeah. uh turned down our application. Mm. Okay. So uh, we already discussed uh, with AR Zalina and AR give us about four lists. Mm -hmm. And then in the four lists, uh, the first one is uh, Teh Bunga. The first one is Teh Bunga. And mm -hmm. we, we already, we already uh, sent an email and also a letters for application to Jabatan because it's a museum and to Jabatan under Jabatan Warisan. But then the, the place is under renovation so we cannot do, uh, we, we are not given the permission to do the measured drawing there okay. and now we uh and then and then uh now we are trying for shai al hadis house and maybe Shai, the, the, the Shai, last shai al hadis oh, okay. al hadis uh and then maybe uh we are not sure too because uh we are still waiting for the confirmation and the next on list is uh Senagara and also Lim Lim Kong Si house so basically, we are still waiting for permission lah, uh, and call back from from Jabatan Jabatan uh, Warisan. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, that's that's all for our group so far. All right. Okay. Um, I follow up. Um, so basically, uh, do you think that you can get the Sheikh Al Hadi punya house too? You get any vibe, um, positive vibe ke? Ada ke? Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. So, uh, for now, uh, you, did you call them? Uh, actually, KG has already uh contacted with them, but. Uh, we are still waiting for their response. Uh, but the way the way okay the way they talk during the call is it like nampak macam positive or like cold ke? Uh, not AKG? sure because that is an occasion. Okay, G. An occasion. G, G, apa nak apa nak G? Ah, G not here. Eh, but we don't he left the meeting. Oh, pangi balik, pangi balik. But I think, uh. I think we will get the update maybe by this Wednesday. We are not sure yet. Because uh, it seems uh, very difficult because it's under Jabatan Warisan. Uh. So, yeah. <laughs> now, why, why I ask? Because uh, instead of, you know, uh, try to approach one by one, we just try approach all four. Okay, first one already out, right? Oh, okay. Just, okay. Uh, just approach all because it's already third week, kan? Uh, that third week. Mm. Uh -uh. So, yeah, time is running out. 
So, okay, group three on that. Thank you, Fikri. All right, thank group you, madam. Group four. No, group four. Hi guys, group four siapa? Kenapa kena panggil banyak kali? You guys already 21 kan, years old. Uh, madam, uh, we yeah. went to CIMB and uh, they told us that they will give us a response back, but so far no response. Uh, today, Jibon is going there again to see if they are going to let us or not. So, what is the building today? Sorry, what is the building? Uh, CIMB. Oh, CIMB. So... Uh, so this is already third week. Uh, what's the what's the latest response or update by them? Um, still no response. Still no, no response. response because like uh last week they tell us that they will call us and then yesterday I do call them again but then they didn't, mm -hmm. didn't pick up the call. So today I'm going uh straight away face to face to the CIMB bank and see their response. No? Okay, so try try to push them. Okay. You know how to push, right? So, okay, don't push. Macam, jangan kasar lah kan? So, basically, you just say you need the answer uh, as soon as mm. possible because you have to start to do the measuring, etc. You need third week, etc. Mm. Okay? Okay. So, because if not, you can just direct, uh, contact ARZ and try to get other buildings. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Javon and Mustafa. Group five? There's another bomber, right? Hello, who's in group five? There's a there's group leader for all groups, kan? Madam. Yeah? Uh, supposingly, uh, my group is group five. Hmm? Mm. Oh, Mustafa is answering for group five. Mm. Yeah. So who's group four? Group four is Penang Coin Temple. Okay, you're in group four, is it? Yep. Okay. Leader is uh Cairo Anwar. Uh huh. And already got the permission uh last Friday, so we are visiting either on this Friday or Sunday morning, uh Saturday morning. Okay, so do update as I know, because we also want to go and have a visit. Okay. Basically, I want to go like as I know, we've been there for for a few times. Friday or Saturday. So you have you you have to make appointment with them or you can just go there between the two uh, days. They allow us to go on Saturday morning, but we are not sure yet either we are going on Friday afternoon or Saturday morning. So uh need to discuss with the teammate first. Don't worry, you might need both days <laughs> it, yeah. it will take more than just one evening to finish. Mm -hmm. So you can just go both days. Try your best. If you have like any time, just go there and finish the work. Do it as soon as possible. All because right. you don't know what happened next, suddenly PKP lagi ke, who knows. And uh, so complete as soon as possible, okay? Okay. All right, thank you. So yang pending is group, I think group two might be okay. Group five um, depends. Hopefully, hopefully if they can give uh, maybe parts of it, you can try to discuss with Azalina also. Uh, maybe certain sessions ke, ke I don't touch you. Okay, so I hope all of you pay attention to. Let's just stop this one. Stop live streams. 